Hello, this is John Calvert, Technology Learning Facilitator for the Clarkstown Central School District. This session is going to be introdu introduction to locking. We're going to look at how you lock things, why you lock things, and the different types of locking. So let's get started. This activity here is a, a simple estimation activity that I want to do with my students. I've got my number line on the bottom from 700 to 900, and then the uh, flags have the numbers that I want my students to sort, estimate. Now, there's a few things on here that I'd want to remain static, that I want to become part of the background. I want the number line on the bottom to be static. I don't want students to accidentally be able to rotate it or scale it. I also want the numbers to stay where they are. If a student accidentally moves the 700 to over here, that not only makes the number line less accurate, it throws off all of the estimations that have been done before or since. It also slows down our lesson because now we have to fix the problem. And we don't want to be we don't want to slow down the lesson. We want to maintain the flow. That's one of the beautiful things about the smart board is it gives you that ability to keep the flow going. So what I want to do is I want to grab all of the items that are uh, that I want to become part of the background and I select them by clicking and dragging inside of notebook. Now each item is selected. It each has a bounding box with a down pointing arrow. I can click on any one of those down pointing arrows and I can go to locking. But I'm going to do one thing before before I lock these. I'm going to group them together because I don't want to have to unlock each of these four items individually if I want to change something later on. So I go to the down pointing arrow and I go to grouping and I'm going to group these four things together. Now there's only one down pointing arrow. When I click that down pointing arrow I can go to locking and I see my different locking choices. In this case I'm just going to lock in place because I don't need the number line to move in any way. So I just lock it in place. And I just have to do it once because I grouped it together. Now I can't click on the number line and move it, and I can't move on the, uh, the numbers themselves. They're locked. If I click the object itself, the down pointing arrow in the corner has turned to a padlock, letting me know that this object is locked. Now I want to do something different for the number flags on the top. Again, I'm going to select all of them by clicking and dragging inside the window. Each object has a down pointing arrow in the corner. Click on the down pointing arrow of any one of those objects and go to locking. I'm not going to group these together because I want them to move independently of one another. And that's right, I want them to move, but I'm still going to lock them and I'll explain why in a moment. You'll notice that in the locking window, we've got lock in place, allow move, and allow move and rotate. Now I don't need these number flags to be able to rotate but I do need them to move so I select allow move. Now each one of the number flags has a padlock in the corner but I can also move the number flag and use it as my estimation game. Now you might ask why would you want to lock those in the first place? Well one I can't scale or rotate this now. This becomes just a manipulative that I can move around. But perhaps more powerfully let's say I want to do some notations in this window and I want to say well if that's 850 then 750 is probably in the middle over here right or you might have your students try to find the quarters I don't know how you'd want to do this but you'd want to be able to have some flexibility with your your pen because this is a smart notebook and that's what makes notebooks so powerful the flexibility but now I want to change gears as a teacher and I want to be able to go to this page and delete all of my handwritten notes. All I need to do is go to the page sorter, click on the down pointing arrow that's in the corner of the page sorter and clear the page. The good thing is because these flags have been locked and the number line has been locked, those items will not disappear when the page is cleared. And that's a, another nice benefit of locking items in a page. You can clone this page, clear the clone, and not have to worry about losing the things that you've locked. They're permanent manipulatives for this activity. So that is 
locking in a nutshell. We looked at how it's done by selecting the objects and clicking the down pointing arrow and locking them. Why you lock things, because you don't want students to rotate, scale, delete items, and sometimes you want to be able to clear a page and not have certain things disappear. And then we looked at the different types of locking. Locking just statically, locking and allow moving, and a locking and allow moving and rotating. So I hope that that was a useful tutorial. Have fun creating manipulative work pages uh, that uh, your students can enjoy.